the incumbency of former President Duterte, alam naman niya na meron ng mga kaso ang Amerika o kung di bang pansa pa yun, I believe, uh, may mga nag-hold na ng kriyado. So, medyo masalibu ko. Ma'am, you mentioned po kanina na in the next one or two days may mga marami pang pending. So, does that mean may session po tayo ng Thursday? <laughs> Sorry na nawala sa isip ko. Tuesday na pala ngayon ito. So, it's a session will be until tomorrow. Just making sure lang po. Uh, tapos... <laughs> tapos sa... Uh, for anybody po. Do you share po the concern of the Makabayan Black na yung pong pagpili ni Pastor Tibuloy kay former President Duterte as his assets administrator slash caretaker could lead to some ano, uh, money laundering issues? That's how they put it. Uh, your thoughts po? If, if I could clarify, no? um, during the committee on legislative franchise when this was brought up, um, sa process sa pagbili ng administrator. Uh, Ginaro naman po nila na yes, may papeles on appointment. Pero it's only in case of inability. Meaning, hindi pa siya operative ngayon. So, um, I think it's premature to talk about that. But being a lawyer, di ba, if they can prove their facts that's there, opinion naman po nila yun. And there are various legal means and there are various processes that they can um, look into or bring forth. But I can mo na natin na hindi yun naman yun lo mabas sa committee hearing na as of now uh, hindi naman palatlag siya po ang um, administrator just in case lang uh, uh, incapable to manage the assets uh, si Pastor. Konting dagdag lang. I believe this is the statement from the Makabayan Black. T Tama po na. Uh, yes. uh -huh. Ando dun yung fear nila na baka mag-lead ito sa money laundering. Now, the best person to answer that issue should be the former president. Maganda rin talagang lumabas mo si former president at sagutin niya uh, bakit naging ganito. As a lawyer himself was also been a former prosecutor, siguro alam niya yung reasons. Kasi nagkaroon naman ng, in fairness to the Makabayan Black, I believe they also had this confusion because it was all out in mid -day. na announce kasi na siya na magiging tagapag, tagapagmahala. Tagapa, tagap, tagamahala. Tagapagmahala. He will be the caretaker. Kung kung sa Bisaya pa, siya ang kanang muasikaso. Oh, muasikaso sa tanan na assets sa SNNI. Well, personally, I I myself as a politician is quite surprised with that bold act. Kasi, siyempre, may investigasyon, may mga allegasyon ng um, let's say, tax evasion or ill-gotten wealth or whatever the sources of the uh, money of the businesses of uh, the executive Pastor Kibuloy, um, magugulat ka why get a former president? So, w what's the direction? Is it because um, he can have a hand on, actually, lang sa totoo nga, as of this point of time, we really don't know how much in terms of monetary value is the available cash and asset of Pastor Kibuloy, um, considering that he has been a religious leader internationally for a long time. So, andun ba yung fear? Now, there are cases, not in the Philippines, but abroad, related, related to this. Siguro dyan nang gagaling yung context of yung statement ng makabayan. But again, ang hirap eh, kasi Nagulat din lahat bakit former president ang magiging administrator. Kasi during the incumbency of former president Duterte, alam naman niya na meron ng mga kaso ang Amerika or kung ibang bansa pa yun, I believe uh, may mga na-hold din ng mga triado. So medyo masalimuot. So getting a former president as a possible administrator of your properties and your wealth can be misconstrued. 
as hiding something. Kasi you have to get somebody powerful to do that. So siguro nahiya lang din si PRRD at tinanggap niya either nahiya siya na sabihin hindi o kung he's doing it as a friend or he's doing it as a lawyer. So all of these questions can properly be answered by the former president. Para naman, mawala na itong mga lumabas na um, pangamba ng mga kabayan na. Anybody else po? Thank you, Pak. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Earl Tobias from IBC Turkey. Sat, sat. Good afternoon for our good congressman and congresswoman. Um, sa akin lang po, the House leadership uh, has also been uh, very committed and to um, tackling po yung NFA issue natin. No? Uh, as of now, Ombudsman ay nakatutok rin po dito and it's uh, marami pa pong mga nangyayaring uh, development with the issue. Uh, given that we're looking forward with what's happening next year and baka ina-anticipate din po ba natin na ito ay magiging isa sa mga malaking priority ng Kamara uh, bilang pagtugol po doon sa function nitong NFA at what does it mean din po para sa ating taong bayan na maayos itong issue na ito. Thank you. The, uh, obviously, I think the first issue um, has been, at least in the last year and a half, that uh, food inflation has been one of the highest, you know, and it was one of the biggest, almost, I would think, if I remember correctly, 50% contribution to our inflation. I think it was 50%. So anything that you can do to address food security and food inflation, will be down to benefits to our uh, people. No? Um, sa ngayon na, na may hearing din at discussion on uh, minimum wage hikes and so on and so forth, ang nagtutulak po niyan ay pangangailangan ng taong bayan sapagkat may inflationary pressure na naman. Uh, dahil sa mga moves na ginawa ng camera, I think, no? um, particularly the aggressiveness by which the House leadership looked into the issue of food inflation. Um, uh, pababa po ng pababa, actually, ang inflation natin. And again, it, it really is because we're very deliberately and I think quite systematically addressing uh, food inflation. So, um, ang, ang magaling sagot po sa tanong ninyo is yes. <laughs> right? uh, that's going to be a focus. Um, at the end of the day, I think, uh, moving forward, because we need to sustain uh, having to control inflation um, because it's the entirety of our economic recovery na iniisip po ni Speaker Martin. No? Uh, madami hong ugat yan, madaming sanga, at lahat po yan tinatalakay at pinag-iisipan actually ng House leadership. Um, so the, the first is really, uh, yes, it's going to continue. Uh, the second is um, it really has to do with food security kasi pag gutom po ang taong bayan, napakahirap. Wala kong ibang pwedeng pag-usapan. So it's a very basic need. No? Kung ang sigmura nila ay walang laman, wala na po silang pakikinggan. Di ba? Na iba pang uh, issue. So it's so basic and fundamental. It needs to truly be addressed. At hindi lang po sa sa, sa rice, halimbawa, but and all uh, the commodities, in our case, for example, sugar, you know, um, malaki hong issue on food security. So it is going to be part of an important uh, concern for, for, for the House. Kasi kailangan na rin talagang siguraduhin na hindi masyadong mahal ang bilihin para may laman ng tiyan ng mga Pilipino. Yeah, no, um, yun nga, diba? Kung butong ka, diba, may term na kayo na hungry, diba? But um, even with that, the administration is also focusing on that. I think the, the DA said that the, their, their 2025, the 2025 budget be for uh, poultry, uh, high value crops. Uh, so it's not just Congress that's working on it, it's this administration, it's the various departments. Because I think even uh, earlier in the term of PBBM, uh, he said that um, he wants zero hunger. 
And in line with that, Congress is also looking into various uh, means, legislation to aid. So may support in focusing on food security. Meron tayong mga programa, yung uh, Bago Pilipinas, Servi Shopper, di ba? Meron mga ngayon, yung sa Seabulls, Farms, sa Cards. So it works hand in hand with the aid that we're the people, giving to the people uh, with the priority of this administration. And also, the Congress looking into various measures and legislative measures uh, to make sure sustainable itong mga bagay-bagay na hindi lang puro assistance. It, it, so, it's a, it's a focus kasi uh, importante nga na hindi nga magudong mga tao nga. Uh, well, it, I'm not really abreast in the, you know, the, the, the issue of the NFA, but uh, in general, um, I think the House leadership is uh, doing very well in helping the executive, our president, kind of steer our country in a clean path. I say what, what I believe uh, President BBM wants is to impress into, into the Filipino people that this administration is not what his uh, opposition is they're saying that corruption, etc., etc., And that's where the House comes in, to conduct investigations, to provide the evidence needed on either corruption or incompetence, which leads to the detriment uh, of public service for the Filipino people. And what we hope to see in the coming months is action in part of the executive. What we don't want to see is what happened in the last administration. Na may mali, yung head of agency tinanggal tapos na recycle sa ibang area ng, ng, ng uh, gobyerno. Uh, we want to see a very clean, strong arm from the president himself na you did not do a good job get out of uh, my administration. Thank you. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Billy Vegas from Abate Politik. Medyo ano lang po, lalo na po kay Kong Dimacoro. Kong, I understand every year na lang nagkakaproblema yung mga Filipino Muslims na pumupunta sa Hajj. So, nasolusyon na naman ng NCMF yung mga naging problema before. Thank you. Uh, and uh, again, that's what I hope we won't be doing this uh, this coming, the remaining months that we have uh, working for this Congress, 19 Congress. Dahil every year, may bagong Hajj. Every after Hajj, may bagong investigation it comes to this 19th Congress. So we had one uh, for the 2022 Hajj. We had an investigation for the 2023 Hajj. Now we have, uh, we are now preparing for the 2024 Hajj. Kanina, before this press con, I came from the Committee on Public Accounts and we were informed by the NCMF that there really is a danger that Hajj 2024 might not occur because of all of these uh, problems that's happening within the NCMF. Now, the part of the House, we, uh, the Committee on Muslim Affairs is proposing a um, uh, possible solution. And that is the bills filed by Representative Mujib Hataman and Representative Siti uh, Amina Dimokoro. Uh, and that is the privatization of the Hajj. So you have to think about it. Are you, are my Christian Catholic brothers and sisters, we want to go on a religious pilgrimage to, let's say, to Israel, you know, to see where Jesus was crucified. Uh, why do you have to go through a government agency? Why does a government agency have to dictate where you will stay, and your hotel, mo, and your transportation? Mo? No, shouldn't it be freedom of choice? That is the bill that has been filed in the 19th Congress. Hopefully, it will be prioritized. Uh, 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 and it will pass into third reading before we, we adjourn uh, even better before the summer. But that's one of the things that we hope to accomplish in the Committee of Muslim Affairs, the privatization of the Hajj. Thank you. Uh, Fred Mendoza from Manila Times. <laughs> 